Blackmagic design is not slowing down in this new DaVinci Resolve release cycle, and in DaVinci Resolve 20.1, we've got a ton of awesome new features. In this video, I want to dive into five of my favorite new Fusion features and show you a little bit on how to use them. Okay, the first thing that I want to show you inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion is this simple graphic that is animated here. And believe it or not, before 20.1, you could not make this inside of the shape system. If you wanted to do something like this, you'd have to go out of the shape system and use the normal duplicate node. In previous versions, the S duplicate and the duplicate node were a little bit different, and this is actually one of those things I complained about quite a bit in my what do I want to see in new versions videos, so it's cool that we actually see those features added in now. The new version of the S duplicate node has pretty much completely been redone. I'm going to add this in and then take the output of this transform into the S duplicate so that way we can recreate what I just made. So first we can add in some copies, we can offset the X offset, we could do all of that before. Let's add in a few more copies here. What's new in this version is the ability to add in a time offset, which was the biggest thing missing in the past. So if I add in a time offset, as you can see, it's just going to animate them a little bit slower and we basically have this wave that it's creating and I can reverse this wave by having it be negative. So that way it starts on the right and then it just kind of sends that same animation down the line. I'm going to reset the time offset and we're going to talk about the next thing that they added to this node and that is the jitter tab. And what this allows me to do is just make some random changes to all of the different copies. So for example, I could come in here to the size, I'm going to unlock the X and Y and then bring up the Y size. And you can see it's just going to assign a random value to each one of those. Now there is still a limitation with this mode and that is there's no way for us to smoothly animate what these values will be. I could set this to be random and that's going to change it on every single frame. That doesn't quite look right. This is the same thing with the S jitter node and that's something that I hope they fix. It's something I've complained about again in the past. Uh, so hopefully they know about it. Hopefully they'll add some way for us to smoothly change uh, the randomness that is added in this tab. But what you can do instead is if I set this back to be fixed, if I animate it before it goes into the duplicate node, so I just have a shake on this S transform, what we can do then is in the jitter tab is add in some time offset. The difference between this time offset and the one found on the controls tab is that it's random for each one of those different copies instead of being sequential. So if I bring this up to something like maybe 30 and hit play, it's going to be random. You can't really detect the pattern uh, because it is still basing the animation off of this S transform but I can't tell which one is coming right after the other. So this is awesome. And one more thing that we can do is down on the style, we can change the opacity so we can have it fade off over time. Again, this is amazing that it is now inside of the shape system and we didn't have to bring it outside of the shape system in order to get these features. Good job, Blackmagic. Something else that is new in this version is the ability to use Magic Mask version two inside of the Fusion page. So we no longer need to go to the color page, you know, do Magic Mask, then somehow export that back to the Fusion page in order to be able to use it. Now we can just do it all inside of Fusion. So as an example, inside of Fusion, do Shift Space and add in the Magic Mask. And right away, it is going to be using version two. So if I click somewhere, it's going to do the selection. It still does take a little bit longer than, than previous versions. But again, the quality is going to be so much better. So we can go in here, we can add in some more points to just continually refine this. And a trick in Fusion is if you want to see the background, you can just uncheck post multiply image. And that way we will kind of be able to see through uh, to all of the other information. So I can go in here and select um, anything that is not showing up that I want. And of course, if you want to use the previous version, if you got good results with that, you can use the legacy magic mask at the bottom here. Okay, another really cool thing back in my main composition here is the multi-text tool. This got some nice updates. If you've seen my videos before on character level styling, which basically allows me to select part of the text and change that style, like the font, the color, the size, separately from the other stuff, the old version for that was kind of annoying. It was tricky. It was out of the way. You couldn't do it on the edit page. And the multi-text tool kind of fixes some of that. So if I have some text, I'm just going to type in editor collection, which you should totally check out, by the way, link down below. I can select all of the editor text, come down here and change the font to be something other than the collection text. And I can do the same thing by selecting this switching to extra bold. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this is this does still work like the old character styling system. Check out my full video on that because I go in depth of explaining how all of this works. And something else new with the multi-text tool is the ability to import CSV files. And when I load that in, it's automatically going to load column one into text one and column two into text two. And then I can go in and change all the styling for both of these, but it just makes it really easy to import all of this information. Now, before we go any farther, I want to mention my editor collection and editor titles packs. It's a great way to 
support the channel and save yourself a ton of time in the process. Editor Collection has a bunch of utility tools like making zooms, highlights, marker animations, all sorts of stuff like that that I'm using in this video to edit it without keyframes. And Editor Titles has all of the titles that I'll be using in this video. It's just drag and drop animated titles that I can change with the anim engine so I can make it longer, shorter, anything like that and just easily display information without spending hours in Fusion. So check out both of those at the link down below. Okay, another really cool feature that was added that might not appeal to everybody, but for people like me who do a lot of work in templates and macros, this is an amazing feature and it can help you out as well. So let's say I'm working inside of the text tool, I can set my size to whatever I want, and let's say I want to animate the size, but I still want to have this control visible so that way I can easily change what the size is. Well, in that case, what you would do is go to the Layout tab and use this sl size slider to actually animate it, because this one is independent from the one on the main tab. Anyways, the annoying part about this is it caps out at a value of 1. And you can come in here and type in something like 1.5, and so that way you can, you can bring it past that. But what you could do instead is just right-click on the control, come down to Edit Control, and now we can set the range to be something like 5. So when I hit OK, before I do that, I want to make sure it still saves onto the Layout tab. Then I'll press OK, and now this layout size goes all the way up to 5, and it's really easy to customize. Previously with this, you would have to right-click on the node, do Edit Controls, and then you'd have to find that control inside of the ID list. And there's hundreds of controls inside of nodes, so that could take a while. This just makes it way easier to find what you're looking for. Okay, last but certainly not least is this new feature regarding how Fusion deals with resolution. I'm working in a 1920 by 1080 composition, and I have a 4K piece of media. So if I go into the Fusion page, you can see I'm going to be able to work with that full 4K resolution, but sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want to be able to work in 1080p, so that way you can save some resources and then upscale to, to 4K at the end. And previously, how you, how you would have to do that is right-clicking and converting this to a Fusion clip. Now, you don't really need to do that. You can come down to the project settings, come down to Fusion, and then do downscale to timeline resolution. And when I press save, nothing will change on the edit page, but if I go into Fusion, it is now working in 1080p. The cool thing about that is if I do come in here and change my project settings to be back to 4K, it's going to automatically change that so it is working with the full media resolution. Switching back to 1080p, if I go to the media pool and drag the same video directly into Fusion, it is not going to go through this, this process of changing its resolution. So in, in the case of importing from the media pool, just add in a letterbox node and then set the resolution or the auto resolution to on and that'll do basically the same thing. As you can see, we have a bunch of really cool updates inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion and just some quality of life stuff that's going to make working in it way better. Make sure you check out my editor collection and editor titles packs. Those were used to edit this entire video so I didn't have to use any keyframes and it saved me a lot of time so I could get this video out right away. If you guys have any questions about the new update or anything else you want to see, just let me know and I'll see you in the next video.